Right, hello, grade nines. How are you? Good. The first lesson of the term or term three, and of course this term, if you look at the syllabus for term three, you will see that we're doing functions and relationships and graphs. So those two goes together. Functions and relationships and graphs goes together, right? Then we're doing algebraic expressions, algebraic equations again, and of course, surface area and volume of 3D objects. So that is the syllabus for term three. Cool. So let's start off with the first one, functions and relationships and graphs. Right, let's get started. Lesson one. Functions and relationships, lesson one. And the topic is graphs. Now, interpreting graphs. So in this chapter, we will revise different types of real world graphs. And we call them global graphs. Well, you've done some of them in grade eight. We will then sketch the graphs of linear functions later on. Linear function just means straight line. Let's first talk about when will a graph be discrete and when will a graph be continuous. There is a difference. A graph is discrete when your data, your information is discrete and that it can be counted. Counted data can only be whole numbers, people. For example, the number of goals scored by Portugal in each match played in the recent World Cup is discrete. You count the number of goals per match. This can be represented in a graph using dots. In other words, people, no fraction. That's what they mean. They say whole numbers, they mean no fractions and also no negative numbers. So if you have to draw a graph, it will have to be dots. Right, now what is continuous data? Now this is data that cannot be counted, but it can be measured. Now this data can involve real numbers rather than just whole numbers. So it's all the real numbers, meaning it includes all the fractions. For example, suppose that the weight in kilograms of people Going to the gym is related to the amount of nutrients taken by those people per day. So let's say in grams. The weight and nutrients taken is measured rather than counted, you see? So you measure, you don't count the weight and you don't count the nutrients. You measure it using a, an instrument. Now, the weight of the person is not restricted to whole numbers only. Because remember, you can weigh like 61,85 kilos. You never only weigh round numbers, am I correct? So the amount of, so other examples include the cost of materials per meter, the distance traveled against time. So the global graph that will not only consist of a few dots, but millions of dots. And of course, all these millions of dots will form a solid straight line, or maybe sometimes a curve. So please make sure you see the difference between discrete and continuous. Cool. Let's I'll do our first example. Here I have, when bacteria are grown in a closed system, like a test tube, the population of cells almost always grow according to the pattern shown in the graph below. So in other people, that graph represents the growth of the bacteria. Can be covert, isn't it? Right. So it is the number of cells in the test tube in millions against time in hours. So the number of cells is recorded hourly. So let's take note here on the x axis, number of cells in millions. Like the one will be one million, two will be two million, 18 will be 18 million. Is it clear, people? Then time in hours. Now remember, time is always on the x-axis, so that is the y-axis, sorry. That is the y-axis, which is the dependent variable. This is the x-axis, which is independent. And time is always independent. So therefore, you will always have time on the x-axis. Now, if you look at this graph, you see dots. So immediately you know it is discrete, am I correct? And not continuous, it's discrete data. And 
lot of things are happening. You see, it's not a straight line. It seems like it's what we call a broken line. So let's see a few questions on here. So the first question is, how many cells are there in the test tube initially? Initially means in the beginning, so it is here where time is zero. And where's the dot? At two, so it should be two million bacteria. Clear, guys? How many cells are there in the test tube after one hour? So you go now one hour, ah, you go up and across. So it is also, it's still, so after one hour, it is still two million, can you see? Third question, explain what is happening between A and B. If you look at between A and B people, it's the graph is not going up, it's not going down, it is running horizontally. So that means time didn't stop, time marched on, but growth did not take place. So in other words, there was no growth between A and B, only time marched on. Is it clear? D. How many hours are there? Oh, sorry, after how many hours are there? Seven million cells in the test tube. So you must go to seven. There's seven million. Go across and down, and there you are. After three hours. Cool. Next question. Explain what is happening between B and C. So there's B and there's C. And you'll notice it is a line that goes up positively. So that means there is a growth. However, it is not a straight line. It is like zigzag. So therefore, we say it is non-linear. Remember linear, like from D to E, that's linear. It's a straight line. But from B to C, it is not. It is non-linear, but the bacteria is increasing. All right, cool. Next question. What happens between B and uh, between C and D? Ah, C and D is the same like A and B. So you know time is marching on, but the growth of bacteria did not take place. So the, the bacteria did not increase over those two hours. All right. After, oh, what happened when, uh, after how many hours are there four million cells in the test tube? So four million, there you are, four million, go up and down uh, after two hours. Cool. Next question. All right. After, explain what's happening between D and E. What's happening between D and E? Ah, uh, between D and E, now it's, a, it's linear, it's a straight line. However, it, is, it runs in the opposite direction. So that means there's no more growth. It is decay. So that means the bacteria is dying now because the numbers are decreasing. Time is still marching on, but the numbers are decreasing. So remember, a positive to the right is increasing, and then a graph to the left is decreasing. Right. And explain what is happening between D and E. Like I just said, they are dying. Right. Is the data discrete or continuous? We already said it is uh, discrete because we have dots. And can you read off from the graph the number of cells after one and a half hour? It will be difficult, people. It will be difficult because, remember, they took measurements every hour. So it will be difficult to get an exact answer. You can judge, more or less, hour and a half is about there. So maybe approximately three million. But you can't say exactly. You have got to say approximately three million. Clear, guys? And then... Now, next question, what is the maximum number of cells in the test tube during the 10-hour time period? Maximum during 10 hours? Let's see. Right. So from there to there is 10 hours. So maximum is there, isn't it? Between C and D. So the maximum will be 15 million. Cool. Right. I hope you've enjoyed this one. So in the next video, there's your solutions, of course. In the next video, I'm going to do example two. Bye. End of this video.